Welcome back to another pattern tutorial video. Today I'll be showing you how to make a beautiful wrap skirt out of Vogue 9349, View B, which is this one here. This skirt is really amazing for how easy it is. There's no buttons or zippers, so it's perfect for beginners. I hope you have as much fun making this skirt as me, so let's get started. <laughs> For this tutorial I'll be following Vogue 9349 in view B, which is the skirt with two layers. For this pattern you'll need at least 2.6 meters of light to medium weight woven fabric. Use taffeta and satin for big volume and drama, or use lightweight fabrics such as Georgette, Volé and light satin for a romantic flowing look. I'm using medium weight delusted satin. This skirt is completely lined. You'll need at least 3.7 meters of matching lining fabric. I'm using a cotton poplin for breathability. Only the waistband of this skirt is interfaced, so you'll need about a meter of interfacing depending on how wide your interfacing is. You'll need matching thread. This pattern requires four sets of hook and bars. These will hold the skirt closed and all the usual sewing supplies, such as the sewing machine, tailor's chalk, pins, and a tape measure. To mark the darts, I'll be using a tracing wheel and carbon paper. Here's what the pattern looks like. You'll find the full material requirements on the back. The tab at the top of the pattern is the recommended measurements for each size. Choose your size based on your hip measurement, which is the largest point around your hips. To make view B, you'll need to cut out pattern pieces 1 to 8, and 11 and 12 in your size. Today I'm going to cut out this pattern in mostly size 14, which is based on my hip size. My waist measurement is a size 12. The waistband of this skirt sits on the waist, so I'm going to cut this out in size 12. To cut the pattern, simply follow the line indicated as your size all the way around the outside of the pattern. Don't cut along any of the lines on the inside of the pattern piece. The pieces that make up the hip area of the skirt are pieces 1 and 2. For these pieces, I'm going to grade between size 12 at the top and size 14 at the hip. If you have a look at piece 1, you'll see that there's a crossed circle marking to represent the hip line. I'm going to draw a line from size 14 at the hip line and size 12 at the top edge of the pattern. I'm using a curved ruler to make this line smooth. The other side of piece 1 is straight, so I can simply draw a line in between the sizes I want. Redraw the notch markings on this line. I've lined up piece 1 and 2 side by side at the side seam using the double notch as a guide. Use the ruler to make the hip marking at approximately the same level on piece 2. I'm cutting out the rest of the pieces in size 14 since they are below the hips. I've also made a video on how I adjusted the fit of this pattern. Watch this video to see how I made a twirl of this skirt and how I did a sway back adjustment. Use this video as inspiration to make your own adjustments. Here's the cutting layouts for the main fabric of this view. You'll need to cut out pieces 1 to 8 and 11 and 12 in your main fabric. Choose your layout based on the width of your fabric. For the most part, I'm not going to follow these instructions because I want to pattern match the center back seams. For a full tutorial on pattern matching, see this video. I'm going to start off by folding the fabric in half and pinning the selvages together. Pin the fold of the fabric too. I'm going to go ahead and place piece 1 on the fabric close to the fold. The arrow in the middle of the fabric is called the grain line. This must be parallel to the selvage or the fold. So use your measuring tape to make sure that the distance to the fold is the same down the length of the grain line. 
You must repeat this process for all pattern pieces with grain line arrows. Pin piece 1 to the fabric. Next, I'm going to place piece 2. This piece needs to be cut on the fold. This means that the side of piece 2 with the rectangle arrow needs to be placed directly on the fold of the fabric. Do not cut along this side. Pin piece 2 onto the fabric. Pin piece 6 onto the fold as well. To cut out these pieces, I'm going to cut all the way around the outside of the pattern piece. The triangles on the edge of the pattern pieces are notches. To make these markings on the fabric, simply cut a triangle outside from the edge of the pattern. Notches are very important because they help us match the right pieces together. Cut all the pieces that you've pinned so far. From here on, you can follow the pattern layout if you want. I'll be cutting the pieces on the fly so I can pattern match them. I bought a little extra fabric so that I can do this. For this skirt, I'm going to pattern match the centre back seams for both the flounces and the waist. First, make a line to represent the seam line at 1.5cm down the seams you want to match. Cut out one copy of the piece you want to match. I'm only cutting out piece 3 on one layer of the fabric. Use your iron to fold back the centre back seam by 1.5cm on the wrong side. Fold along the seam line on the pattern piece. Pin the piece that you already cut out on the fabric. Place the folded edge of the pattern piece right up against the fold of the fabric and pin. Remove the already cut piece and smooth out the pattern piece. Cut out the pattern piece. In the leftover space, I'm going to cut out two copies of piece 5 and a copy of piece 11. Remember to flip the pattern pieces over when you cut the second copy of the pattern piece. I suggest writing down which pieces you've done and whether the pieces were upside down or right side up. Next, I'll cut out piece 7 and pattern match the centre back seam. Cut out two copies of each of piece 4 and 8. These pieces must be cut on a single layer of fabric as they are very wide. In the leftover space, I'm cutting out piece 12. I'm folding over enough fabric so I can lay piece 12 on top. Then, I make sure that the length between the salvage and the fold are the same. Pin and cut out this piece on the fold. Use the leftover fabric to cut out all the copies that you need of piece 11 and 12. To cut out the lining, I'm going to follow the pattern layout for the shorter width of fabric. For view B, you need to cut out pieces 1 to 8 in your lining fabric. Fold the fabric in half and pin both the selvage and the fold. Place piece 1 upside down, then piece 5 onto the lining fabric. Pin and cut these pieces out. Pin piece 2 and 6 onto the fold. Cut these pieces out. Pin piece 7 upside down and align it with the selvage. Pin piece 3 right side up and align it with the fold. Unfold the lining fabric. Pin and cut out piece 8, then piece 4. Then cut these pieces out again upside down. Only the waistband of the skirt needs to be interfaced, which are pieces 11 and 12. My interfacing is wide, so I'm not going to follow the suggested layout. I'm going to fold the interfacing over by just enough to place piece 12 on top. Check that the fold aligns with the grain line. I'm then pinning and cutting out piece 12 on the fold. 
and fold the interfacing. This time I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise, just enough to place piece 11 on top. Pin and cut out this piece. First up we need to stay stitch the bottom edge of the front piece. This is done on piece 1. We simply sew over this edge at about 1.3 cm. This seam prevents this edge from stretching, so try not to cut into it later as you sew the skirt. Do this for both copies of piece 1. Grab piece 2. We need to sew the darts at the top edge of this piece to help shape the back. I'm going to use a tracing wheel and carbon paper to trace this triangle onto the wrong side of the fabric. Lay the coloured side of the carbon paper on the table. Lay the wrong side of your fabric on top of the carbon paper. Pin the pattern on top of the right side of the fabric. Use your tracing wheel to roll along the dart line for your size. When you flip the fabric over, the dart will be perfectly copied onto the wrong side. Flip the pattern over and pin it onto the other copy of piece 2. Trace the dart for this side as well. Fold the dart in half down the middle with the right side of the fabric together. We want to make sure that the two dart lines are matched. To do this, I'm going to try and align both lines on top of a pin. Pin into place. Do this for both darts. Take piece 2 over to your sewing machine. Sew along the dart line from the bottom to the tip. At the tip, do not backstitch. Pull the fabric out of the machine and cut the thread so that it leaves a long tail. Knot the tip of the dart by hand. This creates a smooth shape around your bust. Do this for both darts. Grab piece 1, which is the front piece. Place this piece right sides together on top of the back piece. Match the double notch for the side seam. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. Do this for both side seams. To finish the raw edges of the skirt so that they won't fray, I suggest doing a zigzag stitch close to the raw edge individually. You can also overlock the edges or cut them with pinking shears. You don't have to be too neat since all the seams in this skirt are hidden away. When you get a chance, iron these seams split apart. Lay piece 6 on your table. Lay each copy of piece 5 on top at the side seam with the right sides together. Match the double notch and pin. Do this for both copies of piece 5. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. Finish the raw edges with a zigzag stitch and iron the seam split. The first flounce I'm going to sew is the lower flounce, which is made from pieces 7 and 8. I'm going to go ahead and grab piece 7, which is the back piece. Pin both of these pieces right sides together down the side with the triple notch, which will be the centre back. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. Grab both copies of piece 8. Pin this piece to piece 7 down the side with the double notch. Make sure that the right sides are together. Sew down these side seams at 1.5cm. Zigzag stitch over the raw edges that you've sewn so far. Iron the seam allowances split. We also need to sew the lining for the lower flounce as well. Sew both copies of piece 7 for the lining fabric together down the centre back seam. Sew both of piece 8 in the lining down the side seam. Zigzag stitch on top of the raw edge and iron the seam split. We'll now sew the lining of the lower flounce to the main fabric. Place the lining on top of the main fabric with the right sides together. First off, we need to match the back and side seams at the lower edge of the flounce. Here's how to match the seams. Line up the two side seams to be aligned and place them right sides together. 
Use your tailor's chalk to make a marking at one and a half centimeters from the raw edge on top of the seam. Fold along one of the layers at this marking. Move around the top layer so that the seams are aligned. Pin the two layers together. Do this for all three seams. Sew over the seams at one and a half centimeters without backstitching. This will let you check your work. You can now sew the seam normally and it will line perfectly. Pin the rest of the bottom edge and the sides of the flounce. Leave the top edge of the flounce open. Sew where you've pinned at one and a half centimeters. Sew again at about 1.3 centimeters in the seam allowance around the corner and all the way around the curve. We do this to reinforce the curve to prevent fraying. Trim the seam allowance to about half. Trim away all the seam allowance at the corners of the flounce by making a few diagonal cuts. Cut as close as possible to the reinforcing seam without cutting through it. Do this for both corners. To make a nice curve at the bottom edge of the flounce, we need to cut notches into the seam allowance. Use your scissors to cut small triangles into the seam allowance up to the reinforcing seam. Don't cut through the seam. Finish the seam with a zigzag stitch. Pull the flounce the right side out through the top opening. Take your flounce over to the ironing board. Try to flatten the seam by ironing it on the inside. Try to push out the corners and the curves as much as possible. Pin the matching seams together for the top edge of the lining. Pin the rest of this raw edge with the wrong sides together. This edge also needs to be stay stitched to prevent stretching. Sew over this edge at 1.3 centimeters so it's concealed in the next seam. Cut slits into the fabric up until the seam you just made. Doing this will help ease the top of the flounce into the next seam since it's very curved. The lower flounce needs to be attached to the bottom of piece 5 and 6, which acts as an extension for the layers. First off, we need to copy off the square marking at the bottom edge of piece 5. Pin the pattern to the right side of piece 5 at the bottom corner. Place the pin next to the square marking. Fold the pattern on top of the square marking. Use your tailor's chalk to draw a line from the square to the bottom edge of the fabric. Do this for both copies of piece 5. Lay the lower flounce on top of piece 5 and 6 with the right sides together. Place the corner of the flounce directly on top of the chalk marking that you just made. The raw edges must sit together. Pin into place. Do this for both ends of the flounce. Match the side seams of the flounce in piece 5 and 6. Pin the entire flounce down. Use the slits in the fabric to help pin this piece around the curves of piece 5 and 6. Sew at 1.5 cm over the top edge of the side seams to check how they match. Sew the rest of the flounce at 1.3 cm. This isn't the final seam, it's just to hold the flounce in place. We also need to sew the lining for piece 5 and 6. Lay piece 6 on the table. Pin both copies of piece 5 to 6 with the right sides together. Sew these pieces together at 1.5 cm. Finish the raw edges with a zigzag stitch and iron the seam split. Grab the lining for piece 5 and 6. Place it on top of the lining side of the flounce with the right sides together. Match the side seams. Sew over the side seams at 1.5 cm to check that they match. Pin the ends of the flounce well away from the end of piece 5. Pin the rest of piece 5 together for the lining and the main fabric. Make sure you don't pin the flounce, it must not be caught in this side seam. Then sew all around the area that you've pinned at 1.5 cm. Try 
trim the seam allowance to about half. Trim off all the seam allowance at the corners and clip the entire upper edge. Finish the raw edge with a zigzag stitch. Flip piece 5 and 6 the right side out and iron. Pin the upper edge of the lining. Sew over this edge at 1.3cm. Now we'll work on the upper flounce. The upper flounce of this skirt is made from pieces 3 and 4. The process is exactly the same as for the previous flounce. Grab both copies of piece 3. Sew these copies right sides together down the centre back seam. Sew both of piece 4 right sides together to piece 3 down the side seam. Sew the lining just the same as you did for the main fabric. Place the flounce and lining right sides together. Match the side seams for the flounce and the lining. Pin the bottom edge and sides of the flounce, leaving the top edge open. Sew the flounce and lining together at 1.5cm. Sew around the corners and bottom edge again at about 1.3cm to make a reinforcing seam. Cut off all the excess seam allowance at the corners. Cut notches into the seam allowance up to the reinforcing seam. Zigzag stitch on top of the raw edge. Turn the upper flounce to the right side out and iron it flat. The upper flounce needs to be attached to the top edge of piece 5 and 6. Grab the rest of the skirt that you've sewn so far. Place the upper flounce on top of the top raw edge. The corners of the flounce and the skirt need to be matched at 1.5cm. Use a tape measure to measure 1.5cm on the skirt, then place the flounce on top and pin. Do this for both corners. Try to place the side seams on top of one another. Sew the flounce in place with a seam allowance of 1.3cm. Cut slits into the seam allowance up to the seam. Grab piece 1 and 2 which you previously sewed together. Pin the pattern for piece 1 onto the fabric. Copy off the circle marking at the bottom edge of Taylor's chalk. The rest of the skirt that you've sewn needs to be attached to the bottom of piece 1 and 2. Place them right sides together and match the side seams. Place the corner of the skirt on top of the chalk marking at 1.5cm. Pin the rest of the skirt. Sew over the skirt at 1.3cm to hold it together. We'll now work on sewing the lining for the top of the skirt. Take piece 2 in the lining and mark the darts for your size. Pin and sew these darts. Place both of the lining for piece 1 on top of piece 2 at the side seam. Sew these pieces together at 1.5cm. We'll now attach this lining to the skirt we've sewn so far. Place the lining for piece 1 and 2 on top of the lining side of the skirt with the right sides together. Match the side seams. 
They serve the side seams to check that they align nicely. Pin the layers of the flounce aside. Pin the side seams for piece 1 for the lining and the main fabric. Pin the top edge of all the layers together. If you're happy with how it looks, then we can sew from the side seam all the way around the area that you've pinned. Sew the corners and top edge again at 1.3cm to reinforce it. Trim the seam allowance to half. Trim off all the seam allowance at the corners and cut notches. Finish the raw edges. You can now turn the top of the skirt the right side out. Iron the skirt flat when you get a chance. Pin the top edge of the skirt together. Sew over this edge at 1cm. We need to sew an easing stitch over this edge between the side seam and the closest notch on piece 1. I suggest marking this with tailor's chalk to help you see where to sew. Change the stitch length to the longest you can. Pull out the threads from the machine before and after you sew. Sew the easing stitch at 1.3cm seam allowance between the side seam and the notch. We're on the final stretch for sewing this skirt. First off, we're going to interface one side of the waistband. Take the interfacing for piece 11 and cut off the corners on the outside. Grab two copies of piece 11 and one of piece 12. These will be the pieces that will have facing outwards on the skirt. Turn the pieces the wrong side up on the ironing board. Place the shiny side of the interfacing on top of the wrong side of the fabric. Iron the interfacing down until it sticks to the fabric. Place both copies of piece 11 on top of piece 12 so that the right sides are together. Match the notch for the side seam. Sew these seams together at 1.5cm. Take the interface to waistband to the rest of the skirt that you've sewn so far. Lay the bottom edge of the waistband on top of the skirt with right sides together. Match the side seams for the skirt and the waistband. Baste over these seams to check how they align. Grab some tailor's chalk. Mark a line at 1.5cm from both the raw edges on the bottom corner. This represents the seam line. Place the corner of the skirt on top of the tailor's chalk marking you made. Pin into place. Pin the rest of the waistband to the skirt. You'll need to ease the skirt against the waistband. On the lining side of the skirt, hold the skirt and gently pull one of the easing stitches. Pull the string until the fabric becomes slightly wavy and tense. When it looks like it's the same width as the waistband, pin it into place. Do this for both of the easing stitches. Sew the waistband to the skirt at 1.5cm. Trim the seam allowance to about half and finish with a zigzag stitch. Sew together the other copies of piece 11 and 12 too. These pieces are not interfaced and will be used as the lining for the waistband of this skirt. Finish the raw edges of all these seams with a zigzag stitch. At this point we'll need to copy off the four circle markings on piece 11. These represent where the hook and bar closures need to be sewn. Take the uninterfaced waistband and pin the pattern piece to the fabric using the raw edges to help you place it. Pin beside each of the circle markings. Remove some pins so that you can fold the tissue paper on top of the circle marking. Use your tailor's chalk to make a cross marking where the circle is. 
Do this for all four circle markings. Take this waistband over to your ironing board. Fold out the bottom raw edge of the waistband by 1.5cm on the wrong side. Iron into place and pin close to the fold. Use your tape measure to help you trim this seam to approximately 1cm. Finish this raw edge with a zigzag stitch. Do this quickly to prevent the seam from unravelling. Grab the waistband that you attach to the skirt. We also need to copy off the circle markings on the left hand side of this waistband. Copy off the circle marking using Taylor's chalk. Place the uninterfaced waistband right sides together on top of the one that's already attached to the skirt. I suggest matching the side seams of the waistbands. Baste over the seams to check how well they match. Pin the waistbands together over the top edge and the sides. When you pin the bottom of the sides, make sure that you fold up the seam allowance for the waistband that's already attached. Place the fold of the other waistband on top. Bring the skirt over to the machine. Sew the waistband together at 1.5cm. Be careful not to sew onto the rest of the skirt. Sew a reinforcing seam at about 1.3cm. Trim the seam allowance to about half. Cut off the seam allowance at the corners, cut away the seam allowance at the bottom and cut notches into the top edge. Finish the raw edge for the seam. Turn the lining for the waistband the right side out. Iron the waistband flat. The bottom of the waistband on the inside of the skirt needs to be hand sewn down on top of the lining. Use your iron to flatten the waistband on the lining side. Make sure that the bottom edge is still folded away. Pin the fold of the waistband to the lining. The fold should cover the seam at the bottom of the waistband. Thread your needle with a long strand. Fold the strand in half and knot at the end. Push your needle into the seam allowance of the waistband where it will be hidden. Move the lining on top of this area and make a vertical stitch to hold the corner. I'll be using a ladder stitch to sew the waistband down to the lining. Here's how to do it. To make the first stitch, you need to push the needle into the fabric of the waistband for about half a centimetre. Do this along the fold and pull through. Now we make a stitch into the fold of the lining. You need to insert the needle into the lining at the same spot you exited the waistband. Make a stitch length for about half a centimetre. Before you pull the needle through, check that the needle hasn't pierced the right side of the skirt. Then pull the needle through. Repeat the next stitch into the waistband. This method creates small vertical stitches which are nearly invisible. Sew the entire waistband down onto the lining of the skirt. When you reach the end, make a few vertical stitches then knot off. Create a loop and pass the needle through the loop three times, then pull the loop onto the fabric. Repeat this once, then cut the thread. Last of all, we need to sew the closures onto this wrap skirt, using the four circle markings you previously marked. The bars must be vertical to the waistband. Place two hooks on the circles closest to the end of the waistband. The hooks must face away from this side. We will sew the hook and bars to the fabric through these holes. Thread your needle again with a double strand and knot. Push the needle into the fabric beside one of the holes and up through the hole.
Keep repeating this stitching until you build up enough thread to hold the hook into place. Be sure to check that the needle isn't piercing the other side of the skirt as you sew. Now we'll make a long stitch up to the next hole. Push the needle so that the tip is coming out underneath the next hole. Check the right side of the skirt. Pull the needle through and pass it through the hole. Repeat this process for all the holes on the hook and bars. Here's how to do up the skirt using the hook and bar closures. Today we learn how to make an easy layered skirt. Look how beautiful and dramatic it is. We learn how to make curved seams, how to make flounces and how to sew in the hook and bar closures. I hope you found this so along useful. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching! Out of this pattern here, Vogue 9439. Out of Vogue 9439.